mentioned the education side while she was with you because this is this conversation is all about what worked so did she come out of school at all when she was with you i remember once so we used to do lessons in the morning at seven till eight a.m and that's a commitment you know that's what i'd say to to, to young coaches watching you know you've got to try and think outside the box you've got to try and think about how you can get on court with these players and because she wasn't prepared to come out of school or her parents were not prepared for her to come out of school we were limited you know I mean I'm like any other coach I do squads Monday to Friday with one day off for my one-to-ones I do lessons on a Saturday um, Sunday I have off so if you want a one-to-one -one with me it's Wednesday night or it's Saturday um, you know and I think maybe the times we did Saturdays I remember that I think maybe on one of the other, on the Wednesday, possibly she had some other activity or she had a squad or whatever. So we did 7 a.m. in the morning. And it meant we could go indoors as well because the courts were free. Um, you know, so again, we didn't miss any lessons because that's when it was. Um, and I remember we were trying to do a bit more. She must have been like nine years of age. You know, I'd been working with her for a while and it was like, you know, should we try and do a little bit more? And I said to Ian, I said, um, well, why don't we try and do an hour and a half? You know, maybe speak to the school and see if she can just miss registration. Um, and he went away and, you know, didn't didn't hear anything for a week. And I think I think the, I think her mum brought her to tennis this one day. And uh, I said, oh, I said, uh, Renee, I said, uh, did Ian talk to you about her going into school a little bit later? And she said, she said, yes, he did. She said, and I'm going to tell you this once, and I'm going to tell you this once only. She is not coming out of school. She's not going to school late. Don't ask me again. And I was just like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> oh, it was brilliant, you know. But listen, we all have our own vision and our own philosophies. And, and I think with any philosophy, the point is, is that you have one and you stick to it. No philosophy is right or wrong. You know, the Spanish have their philosophy. They all do it. No matter what club you go to, it's feeding, it's loads of repetition. And the reason why they produce players is because they have one and they stick to it. She had, or the, the family had a vision. She was not going to come out of school. And they stuck to it. And, you know, obviously when she went to secondary school, she would have probably have missed games and things like that. But never in, you know, primary school, no, absolutely not. That's funny. Sometimes you see it the other way around where they don't mind them coming out in primary school, but not when they get to secondary school. That's interesting, that. Yeah, she, that she never did. She never did. Um, Just going so back to... Um, you said about the hard work it takes to produce players. Mm -hmm. For those coaches that are watching, you talked about the early mornings. Is there anything else that you did to go above and beyond? You know, back then I was not a, I was not a senior coach. You know, I was, I was young. I was, there were other coaches around me that, that people would have thought were better than me because they were older and more experienced and had been doing it for longer. Um, so, you know, I, I always, I always thought I've got to embrace those coaches. I've got to ask them questions because I want to be like them when I'm older. Um, you know, and, and, you know, I mentioned Paul Dent earlier on, um, you know, an, an amazing influencer on, on my career. You know, I did my PCA with Paul. I worked with him. Um, and, you know, he really takes you out of your comfort zone real badly um but it's great because he makes you better um and so i definitely would have included him in some of the you know conversations with emma and and at the risk of she may go to paul dent for coaching yeah because that's what ha let's be let's be frank that's what sometimes happens um so you know i i i took I took the ball by the horns. I took some calculated risks. I, I got 
I got people involved, which I thought would be able to give me a bit more. Um, I was willing to adjust. You know, I think there's a lot of, I mean, I've got, I've got, I say I, the club that I look after have 20 coaches, which I am, you know, responsible for. So I know this happens. Um, you know, some of them are a little bit too rigid. You know, with Emma, if if I coached her on a Tuesday at seven and she couldn't do that day, but she could do the Wednesday instead, you know, I changed it. And 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 if it meant, you know, I didn't have my lie in on Wednesday morning or I wasn't able to meet my girlfriend for a coffee like we do every week, you know, that's what I did. Um, now, some people may think that's wrong and, you know, that's too, you know, you, you're giving too much, but you do have to give a lot. And, and if you don't, someone else will, you know, there will be someone out there that will do it. And I think the message is you, you've just got to go above and beyond with these players. You've got to put them first sometimes above yourself. You know, as I said, Sunday, I used to have off, but if I didn't do a Tuesday with her and I didn't do a Saturday with her because of weather or because I was ill or whatever, I did Sunday with her. It was like, right, let's do Sunday this week. Let's not miss a week. Um, you know, little things like that. It's, it's, it's not rocket science. I think one of the basic things that the coaches get wrong, and, and probably I've done it in the past, is they're just not there enough. You know, and, and I say it to a lot of the coaches that, that I've come into contact with in the past. You know, for me to be better than you, all I've got to do is turn up every week. That's it. I just turn up every week on time. I'm already doing a better job than you are. Forget my playing level. Forget the fact that I've never had an ATP to a point. Forget the fact that I don't, you know, still play or, you know, I only coach 10-year-olds. I'm better than you are because I turn up every week. And I think that is such a massive thing. And because I now, you know, I, I'm, I'm managing a program, I get the feedback from the parents. And I'd say the number one thing is, the coach is too unreliable. So when you're coaching these better players, be reliable, be there, go the extra mile with the timetable, change the day of the lessons, do an early morning, do a Sunday, go to a tournament. A lot is always spoken about tournament support and the coach, you know, earning money from it. I think it's a real grey area. Um, there would certainly be times, there still is, where I will go to tournaments and I won't charge the client because I know if I go to that tournament, I'm getting it. It's free education. It's free education. I get to see that player under pressure in the tournament. The parents, you know, they, they're going to be like, wow, he's turned up. He, he's interested in my son or my daughter. They're going to probably be a bit more committed to you. Um, you know, other other people will see that you're there with that person and may ask you to coach their son or daughter. Only good things can come of it. You know, I know that maybe you're you're giving up eight hours where you could be earning 250 quid or whatever. But I think you've got to see the bigger picture. If you're doing it regularly, then fair enough. But I think you know you've got to you've got to put yourself out there for sure, especially initially. You know, you've got to get your, your name out there. You've got, to get your, you've got to get on the scoreboard. Do you know what I mean? Before you can start charging this and that for tournament support. And, and actually, it is free education. That's the way I look at it. Has it all been worth it? Oh, my God. I mean, that was the first thing that I said when I was interviewed when she won. That was the first thing I said. You know, when these things happen... It, it just makes everything that I've just said worth it. It's a hard, long slog, you know? I mean, how many, we've all done it. Early morning lessons, arguments with parents, falling out with this person because they think you've done more with this person. Being dumped for no reason. You know, you've done a good job with a player and it's like, yep, sorry, we're going elsewhere now. Um, yeah, traipsing up and down the country, you know, squads, just it, it just is so tough isn't it you know and, and when I first started coaching a lot of my my mates and my family would be like when are you going to get a real job and you're like geez you you try walking a week in these shoes in these in these Nike vapors and tell me to go and get a real job it's brutal at times um but yeah I mean when you hear stories like that it, it's of course it makes it all worth it 
But even if it, you know, even further down the chain, you know, when they go to an American uni, um, you know, when they win a tennis Europe, when they win the county clothes, I mean, I still get choked up when my little kids win the county clothes because I think it's the first step, you know, it's, it's their first big win. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a real achievement, I think. Um, and it does make it worth it because it is not easy. My final question, um, I planned for it to be, have you got one message for parents or coaches out there starting on this journey or doing this journey? I'm not sure you can find anything because you've given me so much in this interview. I think the key word, and I think it, it, it does relate to the topic that we're talking about, which is Emma Rajikanu and her journey. It is patience. You have got to be patient. There are no quick fixes. You cannot, you cannot fight nature. Some kids mature and develop physically and mentally quicker than others. No amount of lessons are gonna change that. Um, you've gotta be in it for the long haul. You've gotta be prepared that nothing may come of it, but you've gotta see the other stuff that can come from tennis and from the game of tennis. And I think if you focus on that the whole way through, you know, how to deal with pressure, how to conduct yourself in front of, you know, people, adults, um, you know, just little things like that, that's going to certainly translate into everything you do in life. Um, but the, the key word for me is patient, you know, and one of the girls that I teach, or one of the girls that I taught, I work with her mum. I'm very, very good friends with, with her whole family. And she did tennis. She went all the way through the journey. She went to university in this country. She continued to play at university to a fairly high level. And she now heads up a team at Hawkeye. Wow. So, you know, she has a great life. She travels all around the world. And she got that through tennis. She's a very intelligent young woman. She could do other things, um, but that's, the, that's where she's ended up, working for Hawkeye. She goes to Australia, the French Open, no, Australia, Wimbledon and the US Open. They're her three main events. Um, and, and you know what, for me, that's just as, that's just as big a story as, as an Emma winning a Grand Slam because she's still involved in tennis and has got, great things from it um and and her parents too were very patient because there would have been times along that journey where i tell you they'd have gone we're out we're stopping this isn't worth it but they kept at it they kept at it and we are where we are and i think patience for me is is a virtue i know it's old-fashioned but it's old-fashioned for a reason <laughs> you know it's 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 a it's a huge part of it there's too many people trying to you know, quick fix, quick fix. It, uh, it does not work. Well, Harry, thanks for what you did with Emma. No problem. Thanks I... for what you do every day with the players without getting noticed. And thank you for sharing these thoughts with me today, because I think this is gold dust for anyone out there wanting to do this journey. Just thank you so much. No problem, Amanda. Thank you. It was great to chat to you. Great chatting.